one U.S. military relocation, public safety, and judiciary. There is one item on the agenda, and that's Bill Number 231-33 LS, which is relative to the acts of violence against an unborn child, sponsored by my good colleague, the Honorable Frank F. Bloss. The just for the information of uh, members of the community, in conformance with the public notification. Uh, Open Government Act, the initial notice for this particular public hearing was disseminated to all the stakeholders as well as to our media partners on the 2nd of February. And then the subsequent notice was sent out on the 5th of February. We will proceed with uh, the recognition of the sponsor of the legislation. I want to thank you, Senator, for joining us this afternoon. And as I provide him the opportunity to be able to share with us and a brief explanation of Bill Number 231-33. I would like to invite Senator Bob Klitsky, please, if you can join us up front. If there's anyone else in the audience who would like to provide testimony, please, I encourage you to uh, sign in at the table to my left. You, Senator, absolutely. I would believe so, sir. <laughs> I believe so. I would also like to recognize Senator Morrison. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Morrison, for also for joining us this afternoon. Senator Frank Blas, on your legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and Mr. Chair, let me write you. So, I'm gonna first off, thank you, and Mr. Chair, and the committee for uh, bringing this uh, or public hearing um, in a very timely manner. Um, and I also want to thank the uh, my 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 ten colleagues who have joined me. Uh, in, sp in sponsoring uh, this piece of legislation, which is basically, it, it's an act at Chapter 20 of Title IX of the Guam Code annotated relative to the acts of violence against an unborn child. And what this legislation would provide, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, very, very simply, is the, uh, is the ability um, to be able to um, protect that child in utero, that child that has not yet been conceived um, uh, in the womb of a mother who of a mother who wants the best and is trying to provide a, a safe environment for for uh, her child and uh, it provides for um, punishment if if you will for those individuals who commit acts uh, violent acts um, directed towards uh, either the, the expected mother or even towards the, the, the child itself, the onboard, onboard child itself. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have the, uh, this discourse uh, with the public and uh, look forward to um, uh, the presentations and, and uh, what uh, I guess here, here in this case, uh, Senator Klitschke can provide uh, to the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Blas. Senator Klitschke, if you can identify yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, oh, excuse me. Try it again with the button turned on. <laughs> Forgot how to do it already. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Robert Klitschke, resident of JIGO, resident of Guam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Shall I begin? Yes, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the committee, kudos is in order for this bill sponsor, Friend and Senator Frank Bloss, Jr., for this humanitarian offering which promotes the potentiality of human life while at the same time protecting the reproductive rights of women. The senator's concern for the unborn is clearly expressed in Section 20.20, .20, the legislative statement and intent of Bill 231. While Section 2020 is praiseworthy, its adoption of 19 GCA Section 1104 as the key definition in the bill is problematic. 19 GCA Section 1104 reads, unborn child, a child conceived but not yet born is deemed an existing person so far as may be necessary for its interests in the event of its subsequent birth. The cited section, that is section 1104, is one of 16 sections in chapter one of Title 19. Title 9, as you were, chapter one deals with personal rights, for instance, minority contracts and litigation. Assigning section 1104 the heavy burden 
of being the essential term in a criminal statute does not serve the statute well. Section 1104 won't work in the criminal statute to be enacted by this bill. Ranvoi ad finitum, excuse me, hard even for me to say it. Ranvoi ad infinitum, or maybe catch 22, best describes the constructional infirmity. Ranvoi ad infinitum is a, is a law French and Latin term, and it's like considering an infinity of mirrors. I, I can demonstrate that. If I have two mirrors here and I look in one mirror, if I hold them just right, I can look at myself, looking 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 at myself in the mirror. That's pretty scary. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Maybe it worked better for you than it does for me. But that's what Rondois infinita means. Rondois uh, means to throw back. So, and that's unfortunately what Section 1104 would do in this context. <clears throat> Rondois ad infinitum, or maybe catch 22, describes the constructional infirmity created by the interplay of Section 1104's, quote, not yet born, and, quote, in the event of its subsequent birth, in the context of murder and manslaughter. The word, quote, deemed is often used in statutes to mean something like treat as if, or perhaps in everyday language, pretend. Deemed an existing person then means we'll pretend that a child in utero or an entity in utero, the, uh, the phrase entity in utero is really much more politically correct than child in utero. So for the rest of my testimony, I'm going to use child in utero. <clears throat> Pretend that a child in utero, that is a person not yet born, is only a person in the event of its subsequent birth. If there is no birth, then the child in utero, that is not yet born, is not a birth, as it were, is not a person because it was not born. So what we have, what would, what would have been a person had it been born is not a person if it's murdered in the womb. Employing section 19 GCA section 1104 as the definition for an unborn child can only bring about the bizarre result that one who kills a child in utero can only be prosecuted for murder or manslaughter if the child is born alive. Thus the description of the Ranvoi ad infinitum. Put yourself in the place of a police officer called to a scene of the murder to enforce this statute. Mr. X over there killed a child in utero. Okay, well where's the child now? Well the child's dead. Well I'm sorry I can't prosecute under 1105 because a child has to be born alive before it's a person, or, or, or vice versa. Called to the scene, there was a murder. Where's the child? The child's right here. Well, the child's not dead. Well, how can there be a murder if, there's a, if the child's not dead? I think you understand what I'm saying. This definition won't work in this context. Prosecution of crimes set out in section 20.70 and the section mistakenly numbered 17.80, that is aggravated, and assault, aggravated assault, and assault would suffer from the same catch-22 as no prosecution could lie until after the birth of the child. So if the assault occurs in the fourth month, can't prosecute until the child is born five months later. Of course, if the pregnant woman had an abortion, it would moot out the prosecution altogether. So much for section 1104. 
9 GCA chapter 16 and 19 adequately define criminal homicide, assault, etc. when the definitional section of the bill is properly drawn to define a child in utero. These chapters have been part of Guam law since 1976 and are well understood by bench and bar. 19 GCA, as you were, 9 GCA is based on model penal code of 1962. An abundance of interpretational materials and case law are available to assist in the application of those chapters. The effectiveness of any criminal prosecution under the bill turns on an appropriate definition of what the politically correct refer to as a being in utero and what I have referred to throughout my testimony as a child in utero. Now here are three possible definitions. We could start out and derive something from 19 GCA section 1104 unborn child, a child conceived but not yet born, is deemed an existing purposes, as you were an existing person, for the purposes of punishing conduct prohibited under section whatever part of the criminal code is, is referenced. A second possibility, a definition appearing in model acts reads, unborn child means the offspring of human beings from conception to birth. A third alternative, this is from the Unborn Victims of Violence Act of 2004, Public Law 108-212. This is, this is U.S. Congress. It's federal law and it applies in certain federal jurisdictions. The term, quote, unborn child means a child in utero, and the term, quote, child in utero, or, quote, child who is in utero, means a member of the species Homo sapiens at any stage in development who was carried in the womb. I think that's the best of the three, in my humble opinion. No matter what definition of child in utero is used, it is apparent that the live birth of the child cannot be a condition precedent to a prosecution for killing or injuring the unborn child. A proper definition of, quote, child in utero reference to applicable sections of 9 GCA and other minor, minor technical corrections suggested herein, and a little fine tuning would give vent to the admirable, admirable sentiments expressed by Senator Bloss and the bill's 10 co-sponsors in section 2020 of the bill. An attractive alternative to what I have described above would be to adopt into our law the provisions of the Unborn Victims of Violence Act of 2004 codified at 18 U.S.C. section 1841. So that's in essence what I came to say. Uh, you know, parenthetically, I'd say that the, the um, reproductive rights of a woman are protected here because no, no thug or bad person or evil person should cheat a woman out of her right to abort her child in utero. If you're looking at reproductive rights. And then I, uh, I just have a footnote here. The bill has a severability clause. And my suspicion is, my suspicion is that if I looked around the parking lot long enough, I'd find a severability clause out there because there seems to be this knee-jerk reaction or reliance on severability clauses. If you were to look at 9 GCA section 1.12, a severability clause in exactly the same language as is in the bill is included in that title. But in this particular case, if you're concerned about severability clauses, you might stop and ask yourself, do we want the provisions of this bill to be separable, severable, or do we want the entire bill to stand or fall? Examine that question in light of the question, if we were to sever one part of the bill, which part would it be? 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Thank you very much, Senator Klitschke. Appreciate your testimony this afternoon. Senator Bass. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Klitschke, thank you very much, sir. And uh, I, I take to heart, uh, you know, your, the suggestions that you provide here. And um, I, I understand and recognize the argument that you bring. Um, I will um, work with the committee and the chairman on being able to um, tighten, if you will, or, or ensure that that the definition does not come in conflict with what we are, what the true intent is uh, of this bill, and that the true intent of this bill is actually is, is to protect that child uh, uh, while they're in the mother's womb and uh, provide those punishments for an individual, that thug, who decides to cause harm to the mother, thereby also causing harm to the child. And they want to make sure that that sticks. And I appreciate also the comment with the suggestion with regards to severability. You're right. Um, and, uh, um, you know, admittedly so, that's probably because it was, a, it, 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 it seemed to have been more the norm than the exception in some cases. Here, this, appears to be, um, this has to be the norm. You cannot sever uh, any part of this, any part of this uh, legislation of this law to, to, to sure, truly protect uh, that life uh, that that mother would like to see um, come to fruition. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Senators, Senator Morrison, Senator Tony Adam. If not, thank you again, uh, Senator Klitschke. It's my understanding that the good sponsor of the legislation would like to have this piece of legislation reported out by the committee uh, so that the larger body of the legislation may entertain it during scheduled session for next week. So I would like to extend to the public if by any chance there's any additional written testimony uh, or comments that would like to be, you would like to provide to the committee that that be provided to the committee no later than close of business on Thursday at 1700. And Senator Klitschke, that's at 5 p.m. Am I correct? Thursday at 5 p.m. Yes, and uh, then I will discuss with the sponsor in terms of his preference and how he would like to proceed. But the I sponsor think, has. I think it. probably I've written and said as much as I should. Okay. Thank you again, Senator Thank Kleski. You. So with that, uh, to the general public, once again, uh, written testimony on any of, of the provisions contained in Bill Number 231, there's 33, is requested by close of business, 5 p.m. Thursday, and then the committee will conclude uh, the closure of the committee report and proceed with the circulation so that, in fact, the good sponsor, should he desire to place it on the agenda, which for the legislative session scheduled for next week, that that will be an option available to him. So I would like to thank everyone for the testimony this afternoon, and this concludes our public hearing. Thank you.